The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and today we're going to be conducting a features inspection and performance evaluation on a large center console with the legs for offshore runs. It's the Pronautica 29 Open. Let's get right into it, starting with her features. Swim platforms flank the twin engine installation. They're covered in rubberized non-skid and 16-inch extensions are to both sides. To starboard, there's an undermount reboarding ladder with a powder-coated grab rail mounted to the bulwarks. There's minimal walk space to transition back and forth, then ahead of that, there's trunk storage and notice that the hatch is held open by dual gas assist struts. The standard boat is without power and Pronautica will factory install either Merck or Suzuki engines in 250, 300 or these 350 horsepower four strokes. We enter the cockpit through an 18 inch wide walkthrough with a minimal safety gate and a four inch step. And the first thing I notice is that there's non-skid matting on all of the decking. In the cockpit, there's seating running four feet five inches across the stern. To port, there's a live well that can be covered with a cushion to extend the seating. Three eight-inch pop-up cleats and two rod holders are to the cap rails on both sides, along with fender cleats. In the cockpit sole, there's a large storage compartment, and looking closely inside, we can see the carbon fiber construction that reinforces the hull. Just ahead, the leaning post includes a logoed mat and two grab handles. Underneath are a sink, a basin, and a live well. There's undergunnel storage and the bolsters start at 22 inches and top out at 25 inches. Up to nine upholstery choices can be selected for all of the seating and wraparound bolsters with no upcharge. Looking at the helm, we start with the tempered glass windshield with zero distortion at the curves. The dash slopes down creating dead space. A flat dash with recesses would be a nice spot for quick grab items. The compass is right in line with the helm instead of centered in the dash. Thank you for that. Also in line with the operator is this 12-inch display with plenty of room for another in this carbon fiber panel. Switches are all pushed to activate. I'd like to see the horn stand out better. The engine controls are mounted at a 45 degree angle. To the right is a VHF and stereo underneath. USB connectivity is just below. To the other side of the sticks is the troll mode controller and the engine start stops just below. To the other side of the tilt wheel are the windlass controls and the rockers for the trim tabs. I'd like to see those move to the same hand as the engine controls. The ignitions are right square in the knee strike zone. The twin helm seats have flip bolsters and three armrests, one shared in the center. The seats are in fixed positions and the optional color choices can also be reflected here. Below are the battery switches and storage. As for the console itself, this is interesting. It's molded in with the deck, not bolted onto the deck. And look at the hardtop mounts. Now they can be bolted to the console instead of taking up deck real estate, so that we still have a full 19 inches of side deck space. Fish lockers are to both sides, and these, along with the two bait wells we saw, are all insulated so they can all double as self-draining coolers. Fire extinguishers are recessed into the bulwarks. The fiberglass hardtop is supported by aluminum tube. It includes a molded-in storage box. Electrical switches are just behind that I'd like to see labeled. To the trailing edge are speakers, spreader lights, and additional rod holders. Just ahead of the console is a built-in 44-inch wide seat that lifts to access the head compartment. We measured 5 feet 4 inches from deck to the overhead, which leaves 3 feet 10 inches of sitting headroom. An interior handle allows for privacy. The compartment includes an opening port light for ventilation, a sink with pull-out sprayer, and a porta potty To the aft bulkhead is access to the area behind the helm panel, easing installations. An interior step eases entry and egress. The bow is laid out in typical fashion with wraparound seating that includes storage underneath. The padded bolster also continues fully around the bow making a comfortable seat back regardless of positioning. Additional upholstery styling is added. An attractive powder coated rail adds to the safety and good looks, but does create a pinch zone if you let your hand slide aft along that rail. The table adds to the functionality and the high low pedestal allows it to be lowered to form a sun pad. Speakers are nestled into the bulwarks and plenty of beverage holders are within reach. And of course, the optional color choices continue to this area. The foredeck is also treated with the non-skid matting. A hatch leads to a windlass with the anchor mounted to a through-the-stem anchor roller. A rocker switch is here and at the helm. The stainless steel scuff plate protects the gel work. The Pronautica 29 Open has a length overall of 29 feet, a beam of 10 feet 2 inches, and a draft of 22 inches. With an empty weight of 10,798 pounds, 75% fuel, and three people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 12,543 pounds. With a pair of 350 horsepower Suzuki four strokes turning 22 pitch prop sets, we reached our top speed of 56.5 miles per hour at 6,000 RPM. 
Best Cruise came in at 3,500 RPM and 29 miles per hour. It was at that speed that the 17.1 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 1.7 miles per gallon and a range of 321 miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 211 gallon total fuel capacity. She was quick to respond to the throttles, coming up on plane in an average 2.7 seconds. She accelerated the 20 miles per hour in 4.7 and 30 came and went in 6.8. We had no significant sea conditions on our test day, so that means we need to reserve comment on her handling and encourage a test ride while meeting with the sales rep. Her wide flared bow did give a dry ride in our light conditions, all enhanced by the 40 inches of freeboard forward and 30 inches aft. She's a steady handling boat, meaning nothing happens abruptly, but that has a lot to do with the fact that there are nearly 13 turns from lock to lock on the steering. As for system redundancy, we shut down one engine and found that she'll still not only plane, but cruise along at 31.5 miles per hour at just under full throttle. All said, the Pronautica 29 Open is a good looking boat with outstanding attention to detail in her fit and finish. She's comfortable to be on and turned heads everywhere we went. And with a cruise range of well over 300 miles, distant fishing trips are no problem. And that's my features inspection and performance evaluation. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.